Let me now start by telling you more about David Card's contribution and thereafter turn to the contributions by Joshua Angrist and Guido Imbens. In the early 1990s, the conventional wisdom among us economists was that the high minimum wage led to lower employment. This view was in line with the standard textbook model where higher wages make it more difficult, more expensive for firms to hire, thereby reducing the labor demand and the equilibrium level of employment. The view was also supported by existing empirical findings that show that minimum wages tended to be negatively correlated with employment. But did this correlation really imply that there also was a causal relationship? Perhaps there was something else that affected both wages and employment, both minimum wages and employment, or maybe the causal link even went in the opposite direction. That is, low employment led to higher minimum wages. To analyze this, David Card, together with late Alan Kruger, used a natural experiment from the US. They focused on the fast food restaurants, a sector where wages are low and where a high minimum wage is likely to make a difference. They noted that in the US state, New Jersey, the minimum wage was increased by 80 cents per hour in 1992. Just comparing what happened with employment as a result of this is not enough to tell you about the causal answer, because many other things could have affected employment as, as well. So Card and Kruger, just in a randomized experiment, they needed a control group. They noted that in the neighboring Pennsylvania, there was no change in the minimum wage. Of course, the labor market could, look, could be quite different in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. But close to the border, it's likely that it's, it's the common labor market, especially in the fast food sector. Hence, they compared the changes in, minimum, in employment in New Jersey with the changes in employment in eastern Pennsylvania. Contrary to the prevalent view, they did not find that empl employment fell in New Jersey compared to eastern Pennsylvania. Hence, they concluded that the increase in the minimum wage did not lead employment to fall. This finding was very surprising for the research community and led to a large stream of follow-up research, where David Card himself continued to be an important contributor. So thanks to the pioneering work and the research that follows, we today know that the negative employment effect of minim higher minimum wages are typically quite small, and the explanation is partly to be found in the, ways, in the way firms behave. In the early 1990s, David Card also turned to another set of other questions in the labor market using natural experiments. How is the labor market affected by immigration? How do investment in school affect pupils' future earnings? Once again, correlation does not imply that there is a correlation. So, for example, looking at the first question, we know that migrants tend to locate in regions where the labor market is good. So just comparing employment and wages in regions with a lot of immigration and with a little immigration will not tell you the causal question, causal answer. Similarly, if we tend to invest more in schools where the pupil perform worse, there might even be a negative correlation between school resources and pupils' future, future earnings even though there is, in fact, a causal relation. So by applying natural experiments to analyze these questions, David Card was able to come up with new and more credible answers. These answers were sometimes at odds with previous work, which led to new research. And together, we today know much more about the labor market thanks to this work. <laughs> 